Panthers came out early. They didn't attack the offensive end as they did the first half. But I believe it's kind of been the strategy year in, year out in the early games. Take care of business right away. Make sure Singles. it's over early. Yeah. Alex English just threw it away. Now Buckner will leave. Norman is back in with Christensen, Sanders, Posse, and Andy Means. Well, it's been a very fast game. It's picked off by Greg Lewis. Good spin move inside. Mm. Back and forth they go. The play a bit ragged, as you might expect right about now. Ty Harris will pierce down the lane. Rebound by Borman. And a minute to play with Duke on top, 84-35. They'll hold on to it for as long as they can, and they're going to have to take a shot. Means. Run away by Lewis and picked up by Ty Harris. Back to Lewis by Foreman and by Christensen inside. Good score by Lewis has continued to play hard. No shot clock, so Duke can just hold on to it. Good matchup coming up Saturday. Duke, Duke and Notre Dame. Dame. Mike Hello. Gray. And Mike Krzyzewski. Should be fun. The 110 game on Saturday afternoon. Yeah, should be a treat. Duke's largest margin of victory in tournament play was 47 points against. One game at halftime, one just wrapping up, and two others. More than convincing 84-37 win. Singular at the half. Sponsored by Singular the wireless company that supports self-expression nationwide. And by this, I meant that. Welcome back to Singular at the Half. Greg Gumbel along with Clark Kellogg. At the break, the Indiana Hoosiers with the lead on Utah by a score of 42. on all cylinders they've shot close to 70 percent Jeffrey Newton off the bench has given them 11 points on five of six shooting Phil Cullen the only guy really getting it done offensively for Utah and Utah not the kind of team that can come back in a hurry they can't pressure you defensively the one thing they we will be looking forward to that game The Wildcats with a five-point lead on the Gauchos, the winner to take on Wyoming. Let's send you to Albuquerque. Gus Johnson and Dan Bonner are there. 9-16 to play in the second half. 61 to The NCAA tournament. Let's send it over to Spencer Tillman. All right, thanks a lot, Kevin. It's Carlos outstanding job. Inside, this guy's made eight three-point baskets, and now they call an illegal screen foul. Let's take a look at the summary. 45% shooting for the Wildcats, 40% shooting for Santa Barbara. But the big story, the scoring for Santa Barbara of Mark Holt with 30 points on 8 of 11, six threes in the game. Jason Gardner has been just as good, 24 points, 8 of 10. From the free throw line, 4 of 7 from downtown. And Walsh. 19 for Boozer, 19 for Jason Williams, for Spencer Tillman and John Sunbold. Kevin Harlan saying so long, and Greg Gumbel, we send it to you in New York. All right, Kevin, thank you. So Duke wins going away by 47. They move on to play the Fighting Irish of Notre Dame. Meanwhile, first round action in the West in Albuquerque. 8.54 to play in the second half. Arizona 63-55 over UCSB. We'll take you there. Gus Johnson and Dan Bonner. 8.43 to play in the second half, 63-58. Arizona is led by as many as eight. However, Santa Barbara refuses to go away. And the three-point basket is what's keeping Santa Barbara in the game. Walton working hard, Anderson quick release. It's good. 
Anderson has stroked it himself today. He has 14 points, has hit three threes. And all three of those threes have come in the second half. And look at the three-point shooting. All right, Arizona in the lead, but uh, UCSB has tightened things up with eight minutes to play now in the second half. Meanwhile, in St. Louis, Stanford and Western Kentucky is now a four-point game. The Cardinal in the lead. Let's go there, Dick Enberg and Matt Gukas. With 12 minutes, 21 seconds left in the second half here in St. Louis, Western Kentucky down by 16 in this second half with two minutes, 15 seconds gone, has rallied on a 16 to four run and have pulled within four of Stanford. A team ranked and seen at eight, Western Kentucky the ninth seed. The winner will play number one seed Kansas on Saturday. Five minute run, 16 to four, inside it goes to the freshman Little, rebound. Taken down by Williams, and here comes Western Kentucky, and here's the man who has ignited the rally, Patrick Sparks. Now we've actually had some very good basketball for the last five minutes, and now both big men out getting a rest right now. But Western Kentucky has the momentum going their way. And David Boyden, who had only two points a starter, he hits the three. It's a one-point game. Montgomery has not elected to use a timeout in this 17 to 4 run inside to Davis. He's finally uh, ends the drought for Stanford. 11.23 to go here in St. Louis. Stanford leading by as much as 16 in the second half, but Western Kentucky, with quite a rally, have pulled within three. And Boyden looking for the tie. Jacobson, the scoring star for Stanford with a rebound. And that intense defensive pressure throughout employed by Western Kentucky is it taking its toll on Stanford. And Stanford has to find a way to get Casey Jacobson a good look. Of course, the Western Kentucky defense has been zeroing in on him. He's working on the baseline now. Julius Barnes for three. A big tray from Barnes, who has 10. 49-43. And it's not like Casey Jacobson has to score on the play, but just that the ball touches his hand, he is actually the best creator out on the floor for offense for the Cardinal. Like Luke Walton at Arizona, point forward. Sparks maneuvering and can't hit the shot against Hernandez, but the foul on young Chris Hernandez. 10 minutes and 20 seconds to go in the second half here in St. Louis. It's been all Stanford from the early going, building a 16-point lead at 40 to 24, two minutes into the second half. But Western Kentucky with quite a rally, pulling within three, and now it's Stanford at 49-43. Julius Barnes with this tray to ease some of the pressure for Stanford. Well, you see with Casey Jacobson putting the ball on the floor, starting to penetrate, drawing the three red-shirted Western Kentucky players, and that'll create a lot of openings. Chris Marcus coming back in the game now for Western Kentucky as Coach Dennis Felton is trying to make sure he has him fresh and rested. He two personal fouls in the first half, only played three minutes, and has come on in the second half and made a huge difference. Meanwhile, Curtis Borchert, the big man for Stanford, is on the bench. Sparks looking for his 12th point. Rebound Barnes. Sparks with a near steal. So that is now a five-point game. Still plenty of time to be played in the second half as they come up on 10 minutes. One other final in Greenville, South Carolina. Duke wins it 84-37. to The Blue Devils shot 62% from the floor. Thank you for joining us here in New York on Singular at the Half. We'll send you back to Sacramento for the second half of Utah and Indiana right after this. CBS Sports presents Singular at the Half, sponsored by Singular, the wireless company that supports self-expression nationwide. Cramble and a fine play by Barnes, able to bat the ball off the Western Kentucky player, Tremaine Rules. Out of bounds to Stanford and with it a timeout with nine minutes and 33 seconds left in the second half. Freshman Josh Childress at 6'8". Stanford by seven. Our game summary was Stanford up by seven. Their lead was cut to within three, but now they've built it back up with nine and a half minutes 
to go. What's interesting in all four sites uh, today, it's about 12 hours of basketball as we have 9.33 left. And the beautiful thing is tomorrow we get to go home and watch <laughs> those 12 hours of basketball. I hope you'll enjoy it as well on CBS. It all began with Kentucky tipping off at about 11.30 this morning here in St. Louis. Nick, you can see how Western Kentucky is staying in this one with some good three-point shooting. They live by the three-pointer throughout the season on average in a game, nine out of 23. Could see Stanford with those 18 points off uh, second chance opportunities. 9.26 to go. Hernandez and Barnes now in the backcourt for Stanford. Rob Little, the freshman in the hole for Porcher. Justin Davis, the other big man. And Childress, the freshman, fires from three point range. He makes the jam, and now comes back with a three. Five for him, and suddenly back to a 10 point advantage, the Stanford Cardinal. All those last two possessions by Stanford. I was looking out on the floor. No Casey Jacobson, no Curtis Borchard. You said, where are they going to get some offense? Josh Childress coming up big with two hoops. Well, that's been the big thing for Stanford this year. The two C's, Casey and Curtis, have delivered. But how about the J's, the Josh and the Julians and the Justins? And when they play well, too, Stanford is good as anyone in the country. There's Josh Childress, I think, uh, feeling some confidence after getting that dunk right before the last stoppage of play. Barnes gets his second foul. He's taken out as Casey Jacobson returns. Looking inside for Marcus, defended by the freshman Little, a big body. Marcus. Tries to spin inside the double team. He scores and he's fouled. Will it count? Yes. Chris Marcus fouled by Rob Little, his third. Well, it wasn't very pretty for Chris Marcus, but Dick, I think that's the first time he has turned to the left shoulder. He has a tendency to want to go back the other way, but just such a wide body, hard to, to get a handle on, on just forcing him one way or the other. He turns and bodies move, and that's going to get Curtis Borchard back up off the bench for Stanford. Marcus converts the three-point play. It's 54-47. Out goes Little and Borchard returns at the 8.33 mark. I'm a little surprised Stanford isn't running some two-man games, some ball screens involving Chris Marcus defensively. They have not really challenged him in that regard to try to pick up a, a third or fourth personal foul on him. Borchard with a double-double, 11 points and 10 rebounds. And a steal in the backcourt, and the foul will be on Joe Vacchini. And that's Renardo Curry, who had 49 steals on the season, off the bench to lead his team. Joe Bikini picks up his fourth foul. Both teams in the bonus, no. Uh, Western Kentucky has committed six fouls. Now to get Chris Hernandez back on the floor for Stanford, it's pretty much got to be a group effort in getting that ball out of the backcourt against intense pressure. And actually, it's probably got to be Casey Jacobson, the man to transport it. Curry averaging six a game, and he's scoreless thus far. Good rebound by Childress. Hernandez to Jacobs. Takes it back out. Seven point lead, Stanford. Approaching eight minutes to play. Good pass to Davis, and a fine behind the back pass, and Borchard showing his strength. Fighting off the defense, scoring, and he's fouled. But how about the court send of Justin Davis knowing exactly where everybody is out on the floor? That is a gorgeous feed. The little drop off, and Justin Davis has a right to be proud of that one. And Curtis Borchard letting him know, but that shot not going unchallenged. Nate Williams picks up his fourth foul, but Borchard's strong enough to fight off the foul, make the basket, and then convert the three-point play. And back to a 10-point lead as Boyden returns and Williams out. It's always pretty basketball. Anytime you see big men able to make those tight little interior passes, first of all, they're hard to deliver. In many cases, hard to catch. One thing Borchard has shown us throughout this game, he has wonderful hands. He's handled some really tough passes so cleanly. Off, 
Just can't get open. And Chris Marcus getting himself caught too far away from the basket. And Wells getting to a stop. Travels with a clock at four seconds. And now a timeout. 7.35 remaining in the second half. Stanford leads by 10. Man-to-man -man defense. Walton. And a whistle and foul. Got another one of those fouls on the inside, holding a cutter running through. Skull Teddy picks up that foul. Skull Teddy got the technical foul called on him earlier in the game, throwing Anderson to the ground, and it's Anderson who he got called holding that time. Anderson, we mentioned, has 11 points in the second half. And he misses the front end. Anderson on the season, 71%. Free throw shooter, five point lead for Arizona. 3.07 to go. Even if he makes this one, it's only six points. We've still got three minutes left to go in the game. This game could get very, very interesting in the last 3.07. Second one good. We'll take a timeout. 3.07 remaining. 78 72, Arizona. Arizona by six with 3.07 to go in the second half of play. Santa Barbara refusing to go away, and Arizona three minutes and seven seconds away from a date with Wyoming in the second round of play. Bob Williams has seen his team stay in the game with their three-point shooting. 15 three-point baskets in this game for UC Santa Barbara, 15 of 22, and so they're hanging around despite the fact that Arizona has really played well on offense in the second half. Hall has been the man for Santa Barbara, 32 points, full of, also coming up with some huge shots as well. Full of from downtown, no. 78-72, Arizona. 2.43 to go in the second half of play. It has been a three-point bomb. And a foul called on. Let's see, who is the foul called on? I think they called the foul on Channing Fry of Arizona. So that'll send Nei to the line for Santa Barbara. Nei, a 74% free throw shooter. Santa Barbara with a chance to get closer, and the clock stopped at 2.13. That's the best thing that can happen for Santa Barbara. They get a stop, and then they get a foul. And the first one good for Nei. 74% free throw shooter. And we have a four-point game with 2.13 to play here in the second half. Now full-court pressure by Santa Barbara. Gardner brings it up the floor. He's got Walton with him. Walton finds Stoudemire. You want to run time off the clock, but you don't want to get overly conservative. Walton looking down low. Loose ball picked up. Here's Nick Jones in a hurry down the lane. Get it! And the foul! UC Santa Barbara. Two points away. Jones with the great steal and then takes it hard to the goal. Doesn't allow Anderson the opportunity to get in position. And these guys still think they're in the game. Nick Jones to cut it to one. He's a 71% free throw shooter. And he misses. 78-76, Arizona. Oh, dangerous pass. Gardner, and he's fouled on the sideline. Not a very smart play by Full of. And the CBS Sports Line stat of the game, Danny, free throw shooting. 21 of those free throws for Arizona coming in the second half. Get complete tournament coverage at cbs.sportsline.com or on America Online. Enter keyword CBS Sportsline. Gardner at the line, 10 of 12 tonight. First one good. Time, one shot. 
And Arizona has just been an offensive machine in the second half. Second one pure. Gardner, 28 points. Still lots of time, but this is a must score opportunity for Santa Barbara. Full love has been hot. The kick hauled with a good look. Oh. And that's the one that had to go down. Now, Santa Barbara is not left with very much choice. Do they have to foul right here? Fouling right here, depending upon who you can get, would probably be a good play. You certainly don't want to let Arizona run a lot of time off the clock. Only down by four. You don't want to foul now. A minute to play, Gardner. Ten on the shot clock. Picks it up. Walton, Stoudemire, driving, changing his shot. Inside Anderson there for the follow. Well, now you've got to get a three. You're down six points. You've got to get a three, and you've got to get it quickly. Two possession games still. 82-76. Full of Jones. Way short with the rebound. Partially blocked by Fry and a foul. And that will send the Cats to the line. Lute Olsen inspiring his team at halftime. They shot poorly in the first half. They failed to take care of the ball in the first half, turning it over nine times. But how about this? Only 11 total turnovers now. Two in the second half of play. Nei fouls out with four points and three rebounds. The senior in his final game at Santa Barbara has had a fine career. What a gritty, determined effort by Santa Barbara. 27 seconds left. 82 to 76. Back to Albuquerque after this. Justin Davis draws the foul. But you're right, Casey Jacobson, really the offense is going through him. Well, he's just got so much ability, and when you are a, as prolific a scorer as he is, it's it's going to draw the attention of the defense, and that's when you can create plays for your teammates. Dennis Felton wants a timeout. 419 left. Stanford 65, Western Kentucky 55. In the second half, Arizona with the lead and the possession arrow and four timeouts. Santa Barbara has one timeout remaining. Zona at the line, shooting two. Santa Barbara had opportunities, though. Boy, they sure did. They had a couple of chances that where they could have hit a big three and cut the lead to one, and they weren't able to get it to go down. You have to be impressed with the offensive play of Arizona in the second half. They just continued to score. They missed the free throw there, but by continuing to score, they put such pressure on Santa Barbara. Fry well over a season average of nine points. He has 16. Rolls off. Oliver's got to get up the floor quickly. Got to get a three and get it right now. Takes the three from deep. And buries it. 17.1 to go. We're not done yet. No, we aren't. And Stoudemire is fouled. 82 to 79. I think that Arizona called a timeout before the foul. So Arizona used one of those four timeouts we talked about because they're having a tough time getting the ball inbounds. So no foul on the play. Arizona will talk it over briefly. Arizona has played so well in the second half, both defensively and offensively. Now, basically, the game comes down to their ability to get the ball inbounds. And if they get the ball inbounds, then Santa Barbara's got a foul immediately. Channing Fry, the last time he was at the free throw line, he missed two that set up this opportunity for the Gauchos. And oddly enough, the man you want to foul is Walton. He is the poorest free throw shooter on the floor right now. He will inbound the ball, though. He's at 66%. And that's one way to keep the ball out of his hands in terms of creating a free throw opportunity for him. Because if uh, Santa Barbara doesn't get the steal, they have to foul the first guy who catches it. Gardner wants the ball. 
Stoudemire fouled. And he will go to the line. Two of four this evening. Salim Stoudemire, the cousin of former Arizona great Damon Stoudemire. You see an outstanding free throw shooter on the season, although he missed two on that technical foul. Hasn't missed two free throws in a game this entire year. First one up is good. That's going to make it very difficult for Santa Barbara, but still you have the opportunity. If you can get down and get a quick three, you can force this situation again, maybe even get a steal on the inbounds pass. Arizona tonight has shot after this one 40 free throws. Santa Barbara 15. Second one good. Now you got to get it down the court very quickly. Oliver. Here he is again. 10 to go. Kicks it out. Full love. Down the lane. Vukovic jams it home with 5.4 to go and a timeout called by the Gauchos. Down by three. Test to Utah, another one. It'll be Jacobson picking it up. And each school with three team fouls. Coverdale will toss it in, 12.08 to play. And a 13 point differential. Here's Fife. Spread the floor. Coverdale controls it. That's where they use the other side of the floor pretty well. Also looking for their big guys. Trying to develop a high-low situation. 15 to shoot. Jeffries feels he has a mismatch with Keaton, who's six foot five. Just can't get him down in the blocks. There's another mismatch for Jeffries. Also, Monty just trying to use the body. Coverdale, a leaner. Eighty four eighty one Arizona with the ball and the lead and five point four seconds to go. Stranger things have happened. You've got to get a steal on the inbounds pass and a three point basket. Walton running the baseline to Stoudemire who is fouled. And he makes the walk to the other end of the floor. What a season it's been for Bob Williams and the Gauchos from Santa Barbara. They beat Cal Poly, UC Irvine, and Utah State to advance to the NCAA tournament. They should be very proud of all of their accomplishments this evening and this season. That'll do it. Yes, it should. 31 of 41 from the line for Arizona. Second one good for Stoudemire. 4.3 to go. Three point attempt. Off to Mark Fry with the rebound, and that will do it. Arizona defeats Santa Barbara after trailing by three at halftime, 86-81. A huge game for Jason Gardner, 28 points. Anderson had 19. Arizona advances to the second round, where they will meet Wyoming, a three versus 11. And the Chevrolet players of the game Mark Hull, what an outing. 32 points, 8 of 11 from the three-point line. A career high. Jason Gardner at 28 and five assists. For Dan Bonner, this is Gus Johnson saying so long. Solomon Wilcox as well. Coming up after this, we will go to Greg Gumbel, who's standing by at our studio in New York. Selling out. <laughs> Well, I guess that means if you sell out, then you're on TV. It's way too cerebral for me at this hour. <laughs> Timeouts remaining. Plenty of opportunity there for both benches. Team fouls. Double bonus in effect. 
three minutes 17 seconds to go and uh, Montgomery goes to a new pad of yellow sheets. His team has led throughout after uh, Western Kentucky started with a three nothing lead. And a foul immediate foul. As we remind you of our CBS Sportsline stand of the game second chance points and Stanford led by Curtis Borchard inside 22 to 9. Get complete tournament coverage at cbs.sportsline.com or on America Online enter keyword CBS Sportsline. Mike Montgomery the coach of Stanford trying to get his better free throw shooters out on the floor so if uh, Western Kentucky starts hacking away they'll be in good shape. Hernandez at just 71 percent. Back to a 10 point lead Montgomery the winningest coach in Stanford history as we said earlier Stanford won the national championship in 42 led by a coach to be Howard Delmar and then they didn't get in the tournament for 42 years they were the patsy out there on the West Coast Montgomery has had them in almost every season since and this was a. Uh, this was the tough game for him. Uh, many felt Western Kentucky would beat Stanford tonight. Especially, especially the way that Stanford finished their season in the uh, Pac-10 tournament and uh, just a very poor effort against uh, Southern Cal. Against the team Western Kentucky with an 18 game winning streak. Chris Marcus and the reach in foul on Borchard I believe. His second. And Kansas the number one seed and uh, Boy, when you look at that score tomorrow, Kansas 70 and Holy Cross 59, you'll say, well, you know, they right. little hiccup. They were <laughs> in a fight down to the final five minutes. Back in our studios in New York, Greg Gumbel, the uh, Wildcats of Arizona off of Jason Gardner's 28 points defeat UCSB 86 to 81. They advanced to play Wyoming in Greenville, South Carolina. The Duke Blue Devils just coasted 84 37 over Winthrop. Duke will move on to play Notre Dame in Sacramento. Indiana's Hoosiers with a 56 41 lead on the Utes of the University of Utah under nine and a half minutes to play in the second half. The winner of that game gets UNC Wilmington and in St. Louis, the winner of this one will take on top seed Kansas. Right now, Stanford's lead over Western Kentucky is 10, just under three minutes to play. Let's join Dick Enberg and Matt Gukas. Less than three minutes to go here in St. Louis, and the Hilltoppers of Western Kentucky with an 18 game winning streak coming in. Trail Stanford by 10. The Cardinal with the ball. Trying to get the top free throw shooters on the floor. Mike Montgomery. Oh, an early shot by the rookie, Childress. That's not what Montgomery wants. Inside to Williams. Orchard cut him off. Didn't off. Looking for the three as they work it around the perimeter. Derek Robinson out there and a push off and it'll go against Nate Williams of Western Kentucky. And for Williams that will be his fifth. Now that time the Hilltoppers did a better job of pushing the ball. They got it into the post quickly and that little uh, diagonal pass back out. They have did not have had the open look at the three just wasn't ready to pull the trigger. But how about the shot by Josh Childers way too early on the shot clock. Williams being informed personally by the official as you look at the game summary that that was his fifth foul. Sparks Western Kentucky the freshman guard with 14 and Borchard with 16 plus double figures in rebounds too. he had uh, 11 boards. Well, he'll be some kind of a trivia question. Patrick Sparks will be who, uh, who's the only guy to ever score a point. Be, and he's a freshman before the, the game even started as Stanford was assessed a technical foul for not getting their starting lineup in to the scorers table on time. So two free throws for Sparks. Well, that fills out Montgomery's resume. That hadn't happened to him. <laughs> And it didn't uh, bother his Cardinal because uh, they came out of fly and took a quick early lead at nine to three and never been headed since. And Mike Montgomery told Army Kate and said, hey, we were busy watching games back there. <laughs> we were watching all the basketball. We were late. Can't fault a man for no. being a CBS uh, <laughs> NCAA tournament fan, can you? Paid a one point penalty as uh, Sparks made one out of the two and Orchard hits both free throws. A 12 point lead, two and a half to play. Bidenoff working inside. Let's go, and go, the rebound, Kershaw. 
Stanford will try to milk some clock here. Pressure sparks on the ball. Hernandez. And Western Kentucky not fouling. Down to 15 on the shot clock as they'll try to spend as much of the 35 as they can. Jacobson inside. Then to Childress left alone. A 12 footer. Borchard with a rebound and a foul. Look at the bracket here in the Midwest. This core of games. Kansas against Stanford. If Stanford prevails the final minute 45. That'll be the game late on Saturday night from St. Louis. Matchup of the Pacific 10 and Kansas of the Big 12. They went 16 and 0. Western Kentucky takes a 30 second timeout. Trailing by 12, 145 left. Two more timeouts left for Dennis Felton of Western Kentucky. Both teams in the double bonus. Well, Dennis Felton telling his team, say, hey, we have plenty of time with our three-point capability. All we've got to do is, is push the ball up quickly. And the best way to do it, and we've said this a number of times, and, and they do get good looks because when the ball goes inside, that the, the defense of, of Stanford naturally collapses, and that's when you get those kick-out good looks at threes. Meanwhile, Curtis Borchard, what, quite a game for this uh, all-pack 10 center, 18 points and a dozen rebounds. Continues to struggle from the free throw line, but I think Curtis Borchard got a major break in that first half, only having to guard and be guarded by Chris Marcus for about three minutes. And pretty much the rest of the way, Curtis Borchard had his way, at least in the height department. 19 for him, 13 point lead. Western Kentucky needs to hurry. Didn't off, fell away, three pointer, well off the mark. Hernandez, they haven't fouled him. They don't want to foul Jacobson. And a lot of time spent by Stanford. And too late, well, 19 seconds, but too late for Western Kentucky to foul on this possession, kind of just letting it slip away. And now, bad foul. With 13 on the shot clock, so they let Stanford burn up a lot of time, down to 72 seconds. As Derek Robinson picks up his fourth foul, sending a young Chris Hernandez to the line. Guy at 6'2", 185, he can bench press 310 pounds, and he's tough uh, mentally as well, according to Coach Mike Montgomery. Timeout, 112 to go. Coverdale, who has been visibly bothered. Whether it's a combination of the back, various leg injuries, he has limped his way through this second half. Shot clock at six. Newton, kick out for Fife. Shot clock at three. Fife loses the handle. And that's Spivey. That's a good call. He never had possession. Oh. And we're back in St. Louis, and not too many hours from now, another quadruple header here on CBS. Four different sites. Those are the early games. First tip at 12:15 Eastern, 9:15 out on the West Coast. Most of you will see Michigan State and North Carolina State. Anxious to see a game I, I'm fascinated by is Xavier and Hawaii. Xavier, the seventh seed, with Big West in the middle, and everyone says that Hawaii team is well underrated. Well, not by the uh, Tulsa Golden Hurricane. They, three times they're going up against Hawaii, coming up short in every one of them. And of course, people don't get to see Hawaii because the game's uh, out west so late. But uh, they could do some damage in this tournament. Tulsa lost only six games, three to Hawaii. Tulsa beating Marquette earlier here in St. Louis today. And that rebound by Jacobson just about does it all in for Western Kentucky. Only 62 seconds left. Stanford has built its lead back up to 15. The big star, Chris Marcus, unable to really contribute in the first half. And that one of the key stories uh, in this game today. You're right, Dick, because you could see in the second half when he came out, obviously, with a different mindset and, and really wasn't concerned that much about fouls. Obviously, didn't want to pick up any early ones in the second half, but 
Western Kentucky really a, a different team when when he's involved. Be interesting because you got Borchardt the big guy and Kansas will really present Collison and Gooden but they don't really play down in the hole they're more big power wings and but will post up. Yeah, well one of the things you see with Stanford that they are bothered by pressure but now with no Kirk Heinrich they, they won't be able to apply the same type of pressure it'll be good but Heinrich makes a, a total a, a difference in that area Patrick Sparks with a little frosting three pointer as time runs out here 56.9 and that may be the last time out left for Dennis Felton it's now 78 64 no it's a Stanford timeout. Hold the pickles, hold the lettuce. Special on us now, you know they don't upset us. You can have it your way. You got it. Time running out. Hernandez finally fouled to stop the clock. 40 seconds left. Another thing in looking ahead at that matchup Stanford and Kansas uh, Cardinal have to feel very confident with the way they play defense tonight and of course they're going to have to even play better against Kansas and you got to think that Nick Collison who was very quiet in the game tonight against Holy Cross will be more involved offensively Gooden has to take more of a of a role in the absence of Heinrich if in fact he's going to to miss the game and of course the, the young freshman of Kansas. Uh, uh, really the, the responsibility falling more and more on their shoulders now. Well Hernandez in double figures with 11 makes all of his free throws eight for eight and Mike Montgomery will get the 20th win of the season eight straight years Montgomery with at least 20 wins at Stanford. And the foul underneath against Rob Little his four. Sends Pandolf to the line. And you got to think that uh, Nick Collison and Drew Gooden and Wayne Simeon and the front court players for the Jayhawk will have their problems with Curtis Borchard who showed tonight he can do a lot of damage around the basket. Outstanding offensive game for Borchard other than at the free throw line but seven for 11 from the field 12 rebounds. Borchard's dad a nine year veteran offensive lineman in the NFL this man at the free throw line panned off his dad boxed in the Olympics two years. 64 and 68 was a amateur heavyweight champion in Europe. Lodic. Wide open. You can't pass that one up in the miss. And then tipped back in by Nick Robinson, the freshman who has been used sparingly throughout this year. Sparks hits the three. 15 seconds left. 82-68 Stanford. I think Robinson just wanted to fatten up his stats there. Get the uh, the miss, get a little offensive rebound. And Montgomery just said, I want a 30 just to get some of my bench players in. Now they can say they were in this NCAA tournament. Down to the final ticks. And wide open is Robinson and he makes sure of this one so four points for him off the bench he's a freshman from Liberty Missouri and here in his home state Sparks fires again and that'll do it an impressive win for the Stanford Cardinal a disappointing loss for Western Kentucky as their 18 game win streak ends here in St. Louis their season comes to a conclusion Stanford moves on Saturday against the Kansas Jayhawks and will play the number one seed our Chevrolet players of the game Patrick Sparks the freshman for the Hilltoppers with 20 and nine assists Curtis Porcher double double 19 points and 12 rebounds. Final again 84 68 Stanford a commercial word then we'll go to New York and Greg Gumbel. In 1935, Foxwood Farm started with one horse and a truck. The horse was a thoroughbred, the truck a Chevy Suburban. Today they have a few more horses, but there's still only one truck, Chevy Suburban. With an available 8.1 liter Vortec engine, it's capable of towing up to six tons, making it the best Suburban yet. Chevy Suburban, like a rock. 
take all the time you want, folks. We'll take this one in red. Beautiful choice, sir. No. Black. Black. That's actually my favorite color. <laughs> red. Definitely red. When software lets you quickly give customers what they want, that's one degree of separation. That's business with .NET from Microsoft. My dad taught me how to fly, I think I was nine or 10, and there wasn't anything he didn't know from the ground up about airplanes. My dad said one time, everybody can be an example, but not always good, and I, I hope that I'm an example for these new pilots and a good one. March 31st will be my 33rd anniversary. I wish I had another 33. My name is Larry Haynes. I'm a 747-400 captain for United Airlines. The only witnesses to the crime are the dead themselves. And one man hears their cry, Ted Danson, living with the dead. CBS Sunday, April 28th. Greg Gumbel back in New York. There is the final score in the Midwest. Stanford over Western Kentucky by a score of 84 to 68. And the Cardinal now moves on to face Kansas. The one remaining game in action tonight in the South. Sacramento, Utah, and Indiana. The Hoosiers lead at 64-48, 2.47 to play. Let's join Ian Eagle and Jim Spinarco. 2.45 to go. Second half, Indiana 64, Utah 48. Indiana got off to a quick start, and they have never looked back. Utah had a couple of chances here in the second half with the door open to make a run, but it has just not materialized for Rick Majerus and company. Mike Davis's team has played hard-nosed defense. They've gotten buckets on the inside. And right now, three free throws coming for Nick Jacobson with 2.45 to play. Jacobson missing on the first attempt, 76% on the season, the sophomore. Game summary. Phil Cullen has been the go-to guy for Utah. 25 points. Coverdale high man for Indiana with 18. Jacobson just missed on the second attempt. And when they've had their opportunities, Utah, they just have not been able to cash in. And here at the line, Jacobson struggling, trying to make the most of the three opportunities, but just never able to really get a flow going at the offensive end of the floor. And you have to credit Mike Davis and company from Indiana's side. They've really clamped down and just never really allowed Utah to get the friendly looks. Just one out of three for Jacobson. And a foul called. Spivey was there. Indiana leading it. 64 to 49. 245 left. Here at Arco Arena in Sacramento. Well, we take a look at the South bracket. North Carolina Wilmington pulled off a major shocker earlier. They knocked off the number four seed USC, so. The Seahawks are waiting for the. Pretty interesting second round matchup. Sure is. That's an interesting one. And, you know, just going back to the UNC Wilmington after Southern Cal buried that three point shot to tie it in regulation. Boy, not too many people thought the UNC Wilmington would snap back and really win that basketball game, but they really showed a lot of character. 65-49, Hoosiers. Johnson running one-hander, gets the win. Jeff Johnson and his brother, Britton Johnson. Neither have put up big numbers here tonight. Part of the reason why Utah is trailing by as many as they are. Ten points total between the two brothers. And a foul call. Now coming up after your local news, stay tuned. The Emmy Award-winning Late Show with David Letterman tonight. U.S. Airmen deliver the top 10 cool things about being in the Air Force, plus comedian Andy Richter and the CBS Mailbag. That's tonight on Dave. Fight at the line. And the first one goes down. You know, Utah just fouling it all cir circumstances whenever they're around the basketball right now, just to stop the clock and hope Indiana misses a few at the line. 
Well, we told you early in this broadcast, Rick Majerus 8-0 in the first round as the head coach of the Utes. And that unblemished mark is in major jeopardy now with 2.20 to play. Catch and go quickly right now. And take a whole lot of time off the clock offensively. There's Caden putting it over the floor. And he missed the finger roll. Long lead feed for Fife, and he'll get fouled out on the perimeter by Britton Johnson. Now, looking ahead now, tomorrow's lineup, first round action continuing in the 2002 NCAA men's basketball tournament in the East, Michigan State and NC State. Pretty good one on paper. Pennsylvania, champions of the Ivy League, taking on California. Creighton in the Midwest against Florida. And 15th seeded Illinois, Chicago against the number two seed, Oklahoma, as first round action rolls on. Indiana adding to its lead with Dane Fife. And for Utah, the season will come to an end. For Indiana, it will continue against an unlikely opponent in the second round, North Carolina Wilmington. And their head coach, Jerry Wainwright. Just too many weapons for Indiana tonight. It wasn't an explosive show with scoring, but the uh, opportunities there for the inside and out and working the ball a little bit better to the post, I think, was the major difference in this basketball game. And the quick start just carried through. Johnson off the mark in three-point territory. Indiana shooting it at 57%. Utah now down around 42%. And there was a long stretch where Indiana was hovering around the 70 percent mark right, in the exactly. field throughout the majority of this game. Well they're a patient team and they will work both sides of the floor which gives them an advantage and if you have a guy like Jeffries who can post up on one side Newton gave him some good offense on the other side of the blocks Newton having a game seven of nine from the floor 15 points so it's a nice combination of the two of them something that Utah just didn't have other than Phil Cullen with his long range shooting. Britton Johnson, he is done for the night. Fifth personal foul. He will be back for a senior season next year. But his brother Jeff Johnson will not. And for Britton, disappointment. Four points, four rebounds for Johnson. Tom Coverdale getting a hand from the crowd here in Sacramento. Coverdale, 19 points and a game high eight rebounds for the Indiana point guard. Jared Odell will come back in for the Hoosiers. 71 to 51. And this matches their largest lead of the evening. A minute 42 left to play. A.J. Moyer will come in replacing Kyle Hornsby. And Indiana will move on to the second round to take on North Carolina Wilmington. Good hands there by Fife. Fife, co Big Ten Defensive Player of the Year, knocked it away from Jacobson. Good quick hands. And Perry is fouled out on near the sideline by Jacobson. Now Mike Davis, his second year as the head coach at Indiana, took over under very difficult circumstances. And he told us, you asked him similarities, differences between the Bobby Knight Hoosiers and what he runs now. He said, hey, it's a whole new system. I couldn't put it in. I didn't have enough time last year. This year, though, I did have enough time to install what I wanted to do. Meaning a lot of different sets at the offensive end, giving his players a little bit more freedom on the offensive end. And when they took shots, almost intimating that they didn't have to look over their shoulders and worry about whether it was a good shot or not. You play a little bit more carefree. And Usually you have better results. George Leach has come on for Indiana, and Martin Osamani will come in for Utah. Travis Spivey, he's a senior as well. And Spivey heads to the bench. A minute 25 left. Indiana Hoosiers led it from start to finish. Osamani on a kick out, pump fake by Jacobson. And even with this game in the bag, if you will, the defense is still pretty strong and aggressive. Cade lines it up and knocks it down. Trace Cade from Alamosa, Colorado. And Utah's going to let the clock go down right now. The fouling will cease. And a reaction from the fans here. The Indiana fans have made the trek to Sacramento. Double up. 
on Terry and a foul call with 47.2 remaining. Donald Perry will head to the free throw line. The freshman will get a pair. And a chance to pad his numbers in his first ever NCAA tournament game. Perry, who has shown improvement throughout the season. Enough that Mike Davis has trusted him to run this offense in those short spurts that Tom Coverdale goes to the bench. And now Rick Majerus will send out some more subs as Jeff Johnson and Phil Cullen each take a seat. That was a great shooting display from Cullen, though. Seven of eight from the three-point strike. Not a bad way to end your college career. Cullen a senior, Jeff Johnson a senior as well. And we're down to 42 seconds to play. Osamani had it bounce off the back of Mark Johnson, a backup for Indiana. Another jump shot, Trace Cate. Now there's no quit with Utah, but it's just too much. As you touched on the beginning of this basketball game, Indiana set the, the mark early, came out and established themselves both at the defensive end and offensively, and just kept the pressure on enough. Spread it out convincingly down here in the last five minutes, just keep the margin spread. Ryan Tapak has come into the game for Indiana off the ricochet. Ten seconds left. Tapak, eight seconds. Splits defenders. Jump shot off the rim. And rebounded by Jacobson. Mike Davis gets his first win as a head coach. As the Indiana Hoosiers defeat the Utes of Utah. Indiana gets the first round victory 75 to 56. So we can put Indiana into the second round where they will meet North Carolina Wilmington. That'll be coming up on Saturday here at Arco Arena. Our Chevrolet most valuable players of the game, Phil Cullen. What a night he had from three-point territory. 25 points. Tom Coverdale, the point guard, 19 points and eight rebounds. So for Jim Spinarkle and Dwayne Ballin, this is Ian Eagle saying so long from Sacramento. Indiana a winner. Greg Gumbel coming up from New York after this. I'm always thinking something terrible is going to happen. Here he is. Harrington, the all-time leader in assists in Tulsa basketball history. He'll run the show with eight. Drives the lane. And gives Tulsa the lead with 14 seconds to go. Foul to give for Tulsa. No timeout called by Crane. Seven seconds. Wade, the leading score. They got to hurry now. Four, three. Diener away. Side. He misses the shot, and the game is over. The Tulsa Golden Hurricane have upset Marquette 71-69. Welcome back to our studio here in New York. Greg Gumbel along with Clark Kellogg. That was just one of the surprising games that took place today. A 13 seed, a couple of 12 seeds, and an 11 seed were victorious today. And uh, Tulsa knocking off a very well-respected Marquette club. They did a nice job. They came right at Marquette from the start. Their quickness was a problem. Marquette had a tough time containing the backcourt of Tulsa. And then at the last second, you saw Harrington knock down that shot to win it for The him. other 12 seed to win was Missouri, knocking off fifth seed Miami. And then how about number 13 seed UNC Wilmington over number four seed Southern California? If you take a look at some of the highlights here, you'll see coming down the stretch, Southern Cal's Brandon Granville will drive the lane and kick to a wide open Eric Craven in the corner who will hit the three and that sent this game into overtime tied at 80. It went to overtime. USC had a chance to take the lead. Never did in the overtime and then Stewart Air rises.